Hello and welcome to the Car Kirana channel and welcome to this 2005 Toyota Camry that we're working on here and I'm going to show you how to replace the rear drum brakes. This is a video you guys have asked about and we finally have the opportunity. This car has a lot of issues. We're trying to get the car safe. Some of the stuff we're doing is struts, bearing and the rear brakes. We are using unfortunately aftermarket parts to save the customer because they are on a budget and they only want this car to last them another year or so. so Without further ado, let's start working on the rear drum. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to take our little inspection plug off. This is where you adjust on these, not from the back. Probably the Camry and some the old Sienna will have it in the front. Everything else will have it in the back. Just take it out. We're going to reuse it. Let's take our drum off and you notice I put the oil drain. I don't want all that dust all over the floor. That's how we keep the shop clean. Little stuff. So you take a bolt. I'll put the size on the screen. This is what you use the same bolt for the rotors. If you want to pop them off, we're just going to pop this drum off. Well, let's see if the guy wants to come off. This is uh, extremely rusty. There it goes. There's our drum. Well, before we start working, we're gonna hose this down with some brake clean, get everything clean so we don't have the dust all over the place. Take our nice brake clean here, hose it down. That's much better. And just for reference, when your shoes get to this thickness, they become ineffective. You notice this side always never wears as much as this side. So if your shoes get this thin, especially in this area, replace them. Here's how that looks up close up. The back side never wears up. This is the leading shoe. This is what gets most of the wear. And this car has over 200,000 miles and these are the original brakes, just for reference. Let's start. Side cutters, these are dull side cutters. Don't use new ones. We're gonna use them to pop the spring. So the first spring is gonna be right here. There it goes. There's something you never want to do. You pop the spring, don't let this shoe get pulled that way because this is your wheel cylinder. If you push it on this side, you'll pop it on the other side, and that's not good. So be careful with this a little bit. When you pull the spring, you're pulling this in. Don't let this come out. Push kind of hold them both. And this becomes kind of second nature, but this is the first spring. Every car will have a slight different configuration. Second spring we're going to take out here is this one. I use side cutters that are dull because this is really the best tool to grab the tip of the spring but don't put too much pressure where you cut the spring. We are replacing these springs, but still. Now the next thing we're gonna to need to do is remove the springs. Multiple tools for this. You can get this super cheapo one, I think it's a Craftsman, or you can get something like this, more specialized for Toyotas. Might, might work on other models. This just pushes it. So you put this here and push it. This works in certain scenarios. This works better in others. I see these work better for removal. Like you're just gonna put the tool over it, push it, turn it. And let's go. So basically you have a pin that goes through this middle and then you turn it and the pin holds the other end. That's the basic idea here. So we remove that. Then we remove this side. The leading side usually in Toyotas is not held by anything else once you remove the spring from it. So we're gonna remove that, pull the pin through, which when your pin looks like this, all nice and rusty, just replace it, don't reuse it. And they have a backing as well, and this shoe will come out. We're gonna work on this in a second. Then this side, we're gonna pull our pin through, and the whole assembly will come out, just like so. So this is the parking cable, and you kinda undo it from underneath. This will vary by model, but the idea is the same. So once you got that loose like that, here's what you're gonna do. You need to undo this cable from this plate that attaches to the shoe. You're going to take your side cutters, kind of pull the spring, and then hold it. And then it should pop right off, just like that. 
When we go install it, it's the same thing. So here's what we're gonna do. When you do this, work organized, so you can see what's going on. Now, I got an OEM spring kit because it's actually cheaper than aftermarket. Let's see what that comes with. This is only one side, got the other side. We got this spring, pin, another spring, and one, two, oh, this one came with an extra one. How about that? We save that for another rainy day. Let's put that to the side. So we got four of these, which are usually the same. I'm seeing one spring here, and this must have fallen, here it is. The springs almost look like they're used, but if you look at this one compared to that one, this one's rusty, this one is not. And then the two pins and the four holders. That's all you get with the kit, and that's really all we need. And we even got an extra one, because I already got the other side done. Now, having said that, you're gonna start with one shoe at a time, and that starts with you getting your new shoes. They are different. Both sides will be similar, but different front leading one to back one. And the way you know this is, you have these, this big pin and then the small pin. Variations will be different between the models, especially like Corollas will be a little easier. This one goes like this. First you find your orientation, this one like that. Leave it like that. And we're gonna push these to the side. We're gonna work on these. We're gonna flip them both at the same time. We got a spring here, so we actually have a new one. Although the spring is not in too bad shape, but we got them, let's replace them. Got the automatic adjuster. Let's take that spring off. Same thing, side cutters. We're not putting too much pressure here to cut it. We're just putting enough pressure just to hold it and grab it. Pull this, move this here. And then we're gonna install our new spring. This spring is not directional in this case. And it's gonna go right here. Just like it was on the other side. Make sure this moves, which it does. I'm happy with that. This is one side done. So remember, we flipped these, so let's flip it back and leave it on the side. We can discard this now. There's nothing left on it. This is the worn one, by the way. Uh, I've seen better days. Put it this way. Then we move to, it's not really the complicated side, but the side that's a little bit more involved in this case. So there is like a horseshoe deal here, that pin. Normally they come with it. In this case, they did not. What are you gonna do? Welcome to the aftermarket world. So we're gonna have to reuse this one. Let's flip the stuff so we can get this spring out, which it's not really under tension at this point but still gonna maneuver it with this. Here we go. And then you can pull the adjuster. This is the adjuster. There's something very important and a common mistake I see. When you get this out, when you put new shoes, tighten it all the way down. Because if you don't, you won't be able to put your drum because this has been adjusting out, adjusting out to compensate for your new one. So reset it all the way to zero. It'll make your installation so much easier, and then you can adjust it once, once we have everything installed. Let's leave the adjuster, though, and let's deal with this, this guy over here. Now, this is not a standard procedure. We are on a budget with this car. I don't want to spend more of the customer's bucks for a little pin and keep going. We can save this one. Just going to force it out, and we'll get it. Basically almost got it. You can reuse these. They're not really something that's under high tension or anything, but. There we go. We got that out. So now you always swap your parts next to each other. Take this out, install it here. That way we're not worried about is this backwards? Is this, no, you swap parts straight. Put that horseshoe deal right here. I need a little help to install it. And then clamp it. If it cooperates with us. I think she, she wants to retire already. This clip wants to retire, but nope, sorry. You keep going for a while more, because that's how aftermarket parts are. Clamp that. That's not going anywhere. 
I am happy with that. Let's get rid of our shoe, which has nothing. Always make sure you got nothing left on your old shoe before you discard it. We're going to install our adjuster. And usually, and this is the case, these are well engineered, folks. If you go install this the other way, it won't fit because this opening is not as big as what we need to overcome here while this one is. So let's install this over, see how it fits over it. And then the back side, I'm gonna get this over here. Now, this is not under tension yet until we put it on the other side. Well now, well, look at that. We got both sides assembled ready to go. Let's go put them back in the car and call this job done. Now before we continue, do you see this, these areas there like scuffed down? This is where the shoe will move. So you want to take a little bit of Scotch-Brite pad and just clean, kind of smooth this area. We're not trying to get rid of the rust, we're just trying to make sure that this is a smooth area. There's no, nothing standing around. That's better. I'm not trying to remove the rust. As you see, it still looks rusty, but we're trying to smooth it out because this is a very rough surface here. We're not gonna use a lot of sandpaper and grinding because you don't wanna take too much. That actually accelerated rusting, but you just wanna clean it up a little bit. This will make like a smoother moving shoes. And later on, we're gonna put some grease here to help it not make that noise. The noise that these do when they're really dry and rusty, like you'll hear a squeak every time you hit the brakes because when they move, they squeak against this. First thing you wanna do is install your shoe that has a connection to the parking cable. And what we're gonna do is pretty similar. We're gonna pull our spring, hold it, bring our shoe, install this in it, and that should do it. Trying to do this with the camera in the way is not fun. I gotta tell you that, there we go. That worked. Sorry if I shook the camera for you. So now you're gonna install your shoe, but first, you gotta put our cable in its right spot, like so. And then kind of just sit your shoe here. We're gonna get one pin, two of these, and then the spring. This is a little dance because you have to line things up as we go. Don't push on this. Because if you push on this, you're gonna pop it on the other side. Now brake flow is leaking and we have, we kinda created more than what we're trying to fix. So you're gonna put your pin through, put your bottom part in, which is basically for most parts that are the same. Put the spring on. And this is where a little bit of patience and experience helps because you're trying to push the pin through this opening and then turn it so it would lock. You can do this by hand, like just like this. Take a few tries, but you can actually get it by hand in this case. If you're doing parking brakes, you won't have this access, this big access that I have right here. So you might wanna use like this tool or what I find works really good is this tool. This tool just sits here and helps you turn it. But now that we got this shoe on, sure it's seated at the bottom, seated at the top, we're gonna install our other shoe. There is little parts that are very important and we're gonna talk about them. Do you see this little protrusion right here? Right there? If you put that backwards, you kill the automatic adjustment function. Because what this does, this right here, this protrusion, it actually pushes this down and prevents it from popping out and no longer contacting the spring. See, these are the little stuff with drum brakes that are very important that you pay attention to. So we're gonna put this in the back and kinda install it in the groove. Remembering that we should never push. When you push on this on one side, do you see how the other side wants to pop? So you always push on them together. Actually, what we wanna do right now is hold both shoes, compress that cylinder, that wheel cylinder. Let's compress it a little bit so we can line things up, which right now they are not lined up yet. The spring is in the way, and this is the dance that you have to do with drum brakes. They, uh, it can get frustrating, see? 
push this up, situate it in place. There we go. You see how that went in? Now I've kind of like when you're doing disc brakes, you compress the caliper. I just compressed the wheel cylinder. Now this is just hanging in the air, so let's hope it doesn't fall on us here. This will keep popping on you and it'll really frustrate you. And this is the frustrating part of drum brakes. You almost feel like you need to be like three-handed to do this, which I am trying to do this with the camera in my way. But for you guys, we will do this. Let's do this. Put this, put the spring, and then put the last part. Let's see if I can actually compress it by hand, or are we going to have to use a tool? There we go. I got it. Nope. That's it. I'm going to get you close so you can see how this sits. So you're going to actually this one. I don't like how it's sitting. There we go. Do you see how the pin goes kind of opposite of where the hole is? Because you put it through the hole, then you turned it. Look at the other side. That's how these work. So basically, this pin, do you see how it has this shape? And this has a similar shape to it. So the pin will go through this, just like that, and then you turn it, and then it locks. If you turn it again, it comes out. That's how this works. This is the basic premise. So at this point, we're going to get our shoe situated, which popped out again, of course. So the reason it keeps popping out is we don't have any tension on it, and that's what we're going to put right now. Get this spring over. There we go. Now this spring is pulling this shoe in and, and it's hung up on this shoe. So now both shoes are pushed together, pushing in the wheel cylinder and life is wonderful. We're gonna put our last bottom spring, super simple. Put this here. And make it across. There we go. At this point we are almost done. What we're going to do next is we're going to lubricate our backs a little bit and we're going to do our final adjustment. Remember how we backed off the adjuster all the way? We're going to have to adjust this, so let's do that. So I'm going to use some white lithium grease and this is what I recommend you use on these because if you use like regular wheel grease or whatever, it's going to melt and as soon as it hits this, we have problems. White lithium grease, you can actually get careless with it and it'll still be okay not going to ruin your liner. So you're going to push it and just put a tiny little dab. Don't overdo this one. If it foams like that and it goes on your shoe, it's actually not going to hurt it. Do the other side as well. And we're going to wipe off the excess thing that I don't want this to be a greasy mess. Now the next step is what I call prevent a comeback when you have aftermarket ones. This is around 80 grit sandpaper and you're gonna take it to the edges. Now from the factory they do roll these edges. Do you see how they're rolled right here? How they're not just a sharp edge? They don't do it so well in the aftermarket world. So we're going to want to smooth that out just a little bit. Don't get carried away and take all your liner off and wear out the brakes before you even use them. But just soften that edge off. Same thing here. And I'll tell you why in a second. Make it more round. And then, just because I am the car care nut, you can actually go on the outer edge as well. I'll tell you why we talk about. 
Just soften that edge a little bit. The reason for that is, if you put them the way they are, this sharp edge is actually gonna start grabbing on, on the uh, drum when they're new, and they'll start making all kinds of squeaking noises. Now, we don't want that comeback right away, or you have to go driving it and checking it out, seeing what's going on. Eventually, they go away, but you want to do this for the customer, and from the get-go, just get that clean, or in your case, since you are DIYing, you don't want comebacks now. From experience, grab a screwdriver, Kind of scrape anything if you live in the rusty land. Scrape all this surround. Otherwise, we get all kinds of scraping noises until we go. We're putting a new drum here because the old drum just, yeah, it's retired, it's done. So we're gonna put a new drum here. I'm gonna go wash it up. It's an aftermarket drum as well. They work, it's okay. I think if you put aftermarket drums, you're okay. Shoes, mm. You gotta do this, otherwise they'll be very noisy for the beginning and then they'll quiet down. But let me go get the drum and we'll talk about the adjustment. Now we're gonna get our drum in here and there's something very important about this style. Do you see how this hole, the adjustment hole, is closer to the stud? You're gonna find the hole in the hub that is also closer to the stud. Make sure that this goes completely flat. If this, this doesn't wanna go, I have to move the whole assembly up or down. There we go. Now that went in. We want to make sure we don't let this down because right now there's absolutely no pressure on this. You hear that? You want that to go away actually before we continue. Get a flat screwdriver and get some of this rust off. Let's try this again. Sure, you push on this though. There's very little, I think we will be okay. The minute you drive this, this little couple flakes will fall off and we'll be good. But here's what we're gonna do in this case. We're gonna put one lug nut in just to hold the drum down like this. So we're not worried about it. Here, this is a one tiny spot. So now, it is vital that you hear the clicking sound. I'm gonna shine my light here so I can see. There's the adjuster, the star wheel. See that star wheel right there? That's where you're gonna adjust. So we're gonna adjust it. You can actually see it come out. One direction will be hard to turn, the other side will make these clicks. If you don't hear these clicks, Ladies and gentlemen, we have a problem. You must hear these clicks, because what those clicks are, the automatic adjuster is sitting on it. Every time you reverse the car, it's gonna actually adjust it up. Because as the things wear down, as the shoes wear down, it's gonna go out of adjustment. So we're gonna have to crank it a lot, because remember how we backed it down all the way? You wanna get it to a point where you can't, almost can't turn this, it has heavy drag. Some people, this is where the schools are mixed on this. Old school guys will say, don't adjust them too tight initially. Some guys will say this to me, adjust them tight and call it a day. Don't overthink this. See, we're starting to get a little bit of drag. Still. I keep adjusting this. That's where you want to get it at. Do you see how it won't even make a turn? Like it has heavy resistance. We're adjusted, we're good. It is of absolute importance that you install this little plug that seals the hole, whether that be the one in the front style, like this, Camry 
or the one in the back because all your hard work and all this new hardware will get destroyed in a matter of few days in salt just because you did not put this plug that are supposed to keep water and stuff away. Very, very important. And we're done. How about that? That was not too bad. Well, there you have it, folks. Drum brakes are not really that hard. I have a few things. There's a little bit more mechanical stuff in drum brakes, like that little lip. If you don't hear that clicking sound, go back. Don't just call it a day because they'll be out of adjustment and your brakes will be horrible in a matter of a month or two. Do this patiently. And one piece of advice, old timers will tell you all kinds of stuff. They know a lot about this than me and everybody. We don't do a lot of drum brakes anymore, but there's no one way to do this. This is just the way I've done it. Never had issues. Check everything. And the most important advice here, don't do both sides at the same time. That is the one thing old timers will all agree on. Do this side first, then go to the next side or vice versa. Because then if something doesn't go and you're not sure how this goes, instead of going to look for a book and repair a man, go to the forums and everybody has the wrong opinion, look at your other side. The other side will be reversed, but it will be very close. You'll be able to, ah, that's where that spring goes or that's where this attaches to. Don't do both at the same time. Do one at a time, making sure that everything clicks, everything perfect. When you're done, compare it to the other side, make sure everything looks right, then move on to the next side. That is one advice everybody will agree on. Folks, when it comes to what kind of brakes should you use, these last 100,000 miles, unless you're in a budget like the owner of this car, or we're not trying to keep this car for another 10 years, we're just trying to get a year, maybe a year and a half out of it, just making sure it's safe, you're okay with aftermarket. But the grinding is very important. The edges, softening of these edges, otherwise these will sing so loud. Every time you reverse, they'll squeak and they'll drive you just mad. So make sure softening these edges only on the aftermarket ones. The original ones, you can soften the top two edges just to make them like these two edges, this one and this one. If you don't want like a, when the brakes get hot and you let go of them, you hear like a little clunk as these engage and disengage. I mean, this is the original one. Look at that sharp edge. This is old stuff, folks. This is from 2005. Newer drum brakes, they started rolling the edges to make the drum brakes feel softer. Like if you go look at a newer Tacoma, they'll have rolled edges. It is a good idea to do that. Actually, we used to do that on the original ones just to soften that impact of that shoe hitting the inside of the drum. As far as drums, should you resurface them? Honestly, I've resurfaced so many drums in my career. Every single one did not turn out how I liked. People call it, might say, I don't know how to cut drums. I've cut a lot of drums. They never turn right. And, and this is the thing with them. You cut rotors, they turn perfect. This never turn right. Something always goes south somewhere. I would, if I were you, you're replacing this every 100,000 miles plus. In this case, 200,000 miles on this car. These are the original brakes on it. Just put new drums. You can do this once every 100, 200,000 miles sometimes. Just put new drums and call it a day. You'll get actually the best results. If you are on a budget, use an aftermarket drum. Just know it's going to rust pretty bad in a matter of three, five years. And that's just how they are because they're not coated. They're, this coating is very cheap. And that's why they are a lot cheaper than the original ones. One more thing about this car before we wrap up this video. Probably didn't notice it. And I'll try to show you a sneak peek. This car is also getting rear struts. We are putting quick struts, my least favorite struts in the world, but we're trying to get them back on the road on a budget because this strut has actually broken. And I am kind of, I was making a decision when we started this video, should I film this side or that side? Because I have a fear that this guy will just break in half at any given moment. I'll show you why. Would you look at the state of this strut? I mean, this thing is done for and the mount, the perch of the strut is like ready to break right here. It's actually, you can see the break in it right there. See if I can get you some light. See the bottom of it, about ready to break here. You see that opening, like look in this area. That is ready to go. It is so bad, but look what it did to our tire over here. It actually chewed up the tire. Look at this tire. Yes, sir. This is a chewed up tire because the strut collapsed and 
it was actually hitting it right here. Same thing on the other side, but not as bad. This is extremely dangerous, hence why we are replacing them and to keep this on a budget, but this is a, like a spare car that they're giving to their kid that's gonna just learn how to drive in it and drive it to high school and back. It needs a ton of work. And they were kind of deciding, should we keep it? Should we not? I'm like, look, if you're gonna give it to your kid to learn how to drive in it, let's just keep the car safe. This is not safe. The rear brakes, the brakes on this were not very happy. So it needed also a wheel bearing on that side, ABS lights, it's really for the sensor, not for the bearing itself, putting a sensor in a wire connection is corroded. Let's get them some ABS. Let's get them some really good brakes. The fronts are already done. Put those struts, let them trash this car basically for a year, year and a half, learn how to drive, then maybe get them something else once they've learned how to drive. They're not going to take it on long trips. They're not going to be comm commuting with it long distance. They're learning how to drive. That's how we all learn how to drive with a kind of an older beat up car, which this is because the owner of this car got his money worth out of this car. He doesn't want to keep putting money into it, which makes sense. Everybody has their situation scenarios, and this is the case with this one. Folks, I hope this video was helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some other videos. And until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you, and you have yourself a wonderful day.